you're good. Proceed as you wish. I'll be muted, but I'll be here. Thank you, Dan. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Nikolai Samakhvalov, and uh, I'm very happy to present this tutorial today. Uh, it's a pity a little bit that uh, we are not meeting in person, but at least we have some benefits of online, such as I already provided two hours of talks and discussions for another conference in Moscow. So I, I'm already jumped to different conference and it's, it's possible to combine uh, several events in one day. Uh, I'm, as I've said, I'm very glad to present this topic today because it's uh, it's a lot of interesting stuff uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm go um, I hope you will find it useful. Uh, first, a few words about myself. Uh, I had uh, education in the area of databases originally in very good university in, in Russia. Oh, by the way, uh, sorry for uh, Russian uh, accent. And I've noticed that already seven uh, speakers uh, will talk, will provide talks in Russian at, at PGCon. So you, you should get, get used to it. And I'm very proud of very gr fast growing Russian community. We needed to find a good database system for, for uh, our needs. And I was briefly user of MySQL, like two weeks or so. It was enough for me. And I quickly, I was lucky to meet uh, good people like Oleg Bartonov, uh, who uh, helped me to quickly jump to Postgres ecosystem. And since then, I'm a big fan of Postgres and also uh, quite active uh, community member. I, I, I run Ru Postgres uh, user group, who, which has already more than 2,000 members, and we have uh, weekly meetings, uh, and we have a lot of activity growing and growing. And of course, uh, it's not uh, only in Russia. For example, right now I'm in, in California. Liat this morning uh, presented another tutor tutorial. Um, he's, he's my co-host at Ru Postgres. He was from Germany. We have uh, members in Australia and everywhere. And also, I'm, I'm active in Russian conferences, and not only Russian, Ibiza, it's not Russia, of course. It's a pity that we decreased the amount of activities this year, but I hope it will uh, return soon. And right now, uh, right now I'm running new business. Uh, we actually, we have good clients, some of them growing like double, two times per, per in terms of data volumes and transactions per second per year. And uh, some of them already multi-billion companies, some of them already went to IPO, some of them preparing. And we have these good clients and we have very good experience and we know problems with uh, Postgres uh, in grow fast-growing companies. That's why a couple of years ago, I launched new, um, new, new, new thing. It's called Postgres AI and we try to automate uh, everything which is not automated. And right now we mostly concentrate or focus on improving the velocity of development uh, using think loans and uh, high level auto of automation. I will talk a little bit about it in the end of our tutorial. So what are our goals today? First of all, I'm going to provide a lot of information. I'm going to, to describe a lot of tools. I don't expect from you that you uh, remember every detail. It's not needed. So please just focus on what is possible rather than on how uh, to do things. So just just uh, later, maybe if you have some problem, you will recall that I described it and you will return, see these slides or this video uh, and uh, Google more information, uh, read documentation and, and it will help. This is the first thing. Next, uh, next uh, I'm going to provide you a new methodology. I called it seamless SQL optimization. This is what I developed. And uh, it's all about uh, higher level of optimization. So please don't expect a lot of recipes, how to optimize this join or this, uh, I don't know, like CTE. It, it will, you will not get it today. Uh, instead, you will have a higher level of um, process, overview of process, how to build scalable process in your growing, in a growing company and how to build better process to, to avoid gaps in it. So this is what we will have today. And also 
please feel free to interrupt me anytime. I'm very open to it. If you're in Zoom, if you're not in Zoom, please join Zoom. And uh, I will be glad to be interrupted and answer your questions anytime. And if you're a Postgres hacker, or maybe if you're some, if you're developing some monitoring system or something like this, uh, observability tools, you may find uh, some ideas useful. Some of them may, may not be new, but anyway, uh, what I'm describing is a current pain in fast growing uh, organizations. So agenda, uh, we start from, from st start from overviewing of current methodologies, including anti-methodologies. Then we split uh, our method uh, to two parts. Ma I call it macro analysis and micro analysis. And we will discuss how to switch between them. And we will discuss uh, diff various tools and metrics and so on. And um, then finally, I will finalize it and uh, provide you overview of, of what seamless SQL optimization methodology is. It's rather, it's more like framework rather than concrete uh, set of tools. It's a set of ideas. And uh, during our tutorial, we will interrupt uh, our uh, boring slides and do some practice exercises on, on Ketacoda. Let's start uh, with it. Uh, actually, I already, oh, I think I already launched uh, this uh, here. So you please follow this uh, URL and I apologize, uh, you will need to author, um, use, uh, you, you need to log in using Google or GitHub or something. I didn't, uh, I failed to manage to get, uh, to get rid of this and get a paid account because it's, it's, it's appeared to be a slow process at, at Katakoda. Katakoda is a very popular instrument for making tutorials if you don't know. And you will get a quite powerful virtual machine and we will play with it uh, uh, using predefined scenario. So follow this URL. And I also, I already, actually I'm going to reload it. And we need to wait like a minute or two while it's uh, launching and uh, Docker container is pulling, pulling uh, from um, Docker Hub and so on. Uh, okay, let's start. Actually, while it's starting, let's change the order a little bit. I'm going to start describing anti-methodology. So just launch it and leave it at, as is. I will not uh, answer any questions like, uh, like uh, if, you, if you fail to do something, just reload and wait a little bit because we have many people. So I'm, I will be not fast in the process, but I, I'm not going to help with everyone with uh, this tutorial. So just restart if needed. So what kind of methodologies we have right now? My favorite one is zero methodology. And we observe it a lot. Oh, first of all, it's inherited from Brandon Gregg's great talks and, and books. If you didn't uh, watch or, or re didn't read it, these, these books, uh, he has a couple of books and uh, one, one of them is fresh one uh, about the BPF uh, uh, observability tools. So please watch uh, uh, talks at YouTube. And uh, I just adapted it for our specific topic for databases and Postgres in particular. My favorite topic, zero methodology, many startups who start with Heroku or RDS or other managed database uh, offerings, they tend to have this approach. They just, uh, they don't have DBA and they don't care about performance a lot. And if they care, they just, they just can add uh, some uh, CPU power or memory and that's it. But of course, this is anti-methodology. Uh, next is streetlight anti-method. So it's uh, it's it's uh, old story. When you lost some something, you tend to find to search it uh, under under streetlight because this is where you can see at least see something. And in databases, we can, for example, optimize queries. We we know they they are slow instead of uh, analyzing the whole picture and moving from top to to bottom. And uh, also we can, we can we also, we always tend to use 
uh, tools and me metrics and approaches we're already familiar with. So, and this is of course not, not good enough. We should uh, develop and advance better skills to cover all, all um, areas of, of uh, workload characteristics. And another, another anti-method is drunk man anti-method. For example, if we have some problem, let's just increase shared buffer. So let's just do, let's just put vacuum full uh, nightly and to cron. I, I saw it a lot and I continue seeing it actually. Or just let's increase uh, default statistics target and have better statistics and so on and so on. Or another one very popular for, for for uh, new people who come to relational databases in Postgres, let's build indexes on all columns. Of course, you saw a lot of such stories yourself. Uh, also very, very good method. And uh, sometimes we use it uh, implicitly, not, not, uh, not by will. So uh, if uh, you know, uh, if you're a database expert, sometimes you, you get this like database is slow. Uh, application developers uh, say us. And of course, we tend to say, oh, it's network, which is slow. And uh, SRE can tell us it's a cloud provider and uh, our network settings are totally fine. So this is, this is also anti-method anti to blame someone else. Uh, not fun. No, it's actually, it's fun, but it's not helping a lot. Uh, let's check our, our yeah, it's okay. It's, it's working and I'm going, you can, um, you can press this button here a little button and check and then you it's like you're just copy pasting and then you okay if uh, if this says uh, relation does not exist it means that it's it's still preparing so let's wait a little bit more uh, what kind of uh, real uh, useful and uh, good methods we have from SRE world we have uh, several methods which were developed by Brandon, Brandon Gregg, by Google SREs, uh, like the four uh, golden signals. They help to analyze uh, distributed systems uh, from top to bottom and ident identify quicker, identify weak points if something is, goes wrong. But for databases, sometimes it's not enough. It's too high level. Or not, it's, it's not detailed, actually. Not high level. It's not detailed. So but we still should should learn them and consider them but uh, we will not talk about them today we will talk about different kind of approaches uh, problem statement method is very very important sometimes you uh, you start optimizing something and realize that something is very slow you identify very bad queries and you you think oh it's a problem and somebody told that there is a big problem and and uh, we are already going to uh, apply hot fixes and uh, escalate uh, very like um, es escalate deployment and but then we ask uh, how, how like we check monitoring and see that it started not not uh, yet today not yesterday and we start asking how long you feel this problem like how long uh, you see this and somebody told us like somebody say, says oh it's already like three months it's not actually it's not it means not that urgent first of all so you lost a couple of hours with very uh, in rush but you could work uh, more like thoroughly and slowly and uh, with less stress so it's always uh, good to start with questions uh, why do you think there is a problem how do you feel it and when did it start these are basic pro basic questions and any experienced uh, dba knows this and use it a lot because before doing something, it's better to ask. It can save a lot of time. So problem statement method is very, very important. Uh, let's check again. If PGSTAR statement is already created. Yeah, it's created. Great. So we have something here. We have uh, some uh, PGBench database. I, I suppose it's like a gigabyte or two. And we have background workload. I slightly modify this database, this PGBench database, and I slightly modified workload. Uh, database name is demo one, demo one. Please don't proceed right now with steps two and, and further. I just follow my, uh, my steps first. This is quick intro before we proceed with real uh, tutorial. So we have something and uh, let's check. Uh, let's check. Uh, for example, let's check uh, top. We see that 
it's not that good. Uh, we have two, C two cores, I suppose, here, two vCPUs here, and the uh, load average is almost 10. So a lot of, uh, a lot of expensive selects and so on. Okay, we, tr we want to identify these uh, queries. Uh, any, anybody can join me with, in Zoom or, or in IRC channel, I see it, and uh, advise me, suggest something that could help me to identify slow queries. What would you, what would you use? Anyone? What was the question again, Nikolai? This is Glenn. Yeah, yeah, oh, hi, Glenn. Uh, yeah, the question is how would we identify slow queries? We have very, very slow database. We want to find a uh, problem, pr problematic queries. How would you approach I know, I know. Okay, okay. PostgreSQL.com lets you log slow queries. Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, you, you advise check uh, log, logs, right? Checking logs. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, I, uh, I love PG stat statements myself. Okay, let's try. Let's try both. I would start from. I will start from PG stat statements, and then we will check logs. Let's check first PG stat statements. It's very um, standard, uh, standard uh, extension, but you need to install it, right? And please, uh, if you like, question to you also: raise hand in Zoom who use, uses uses. PG stat statements on production. If you know how to raise hand in Zoom. Fine. Okay, I see a couple of hands already. Great. Okay, let's let's fetch top five queries by total time. And we see number one, like uh, highlighting is not good in Katakoda. We see this guy, right? So we have we have select count star. And this, we see that an average, it's uh, terrible, 19 seconds. And maximum 40, 42 seconds, very, very bad, very bad behavior. Okay, this is good. Uh, but the question is how we optimize it next. And here we, second approach, uh, let's check logs because in, in PG style statements, we don't have parameters, right? And the problem with parameters that parameters may affect how an uh, executor will work because uh, uh, different parameters may lead to different plans. This is very important and we will see it today. Uh, this is very big, big and important thing. So we need to find some parameters to check the behavior of this query. Uh, let's check uh, logs. It's a little bit uh, trickier because it's Docker, but I think I will do it. Let's check. Right, okay, here it is. So we have this 11. Okay, good. We have this. We have a bad query. What's next? We found uh, aggregated query. We found we found uh, bad query. What's next? What would you, what you do? What would you do next? We look at indexes on the table. Yeah, look at the layout. Good. Good idea, but uh, you are working at this here. You are working at logical level, no indexes. This is bad. So we need to, to do some index, right? And imagine this is a pro this is production. So we need we need to create index, and we need to ensure that it will help. So we need to somehow verify our index idea. And if it's it's production, it's not good to check it right there. We need to check it somewhere else, right? So we. We have problem with finding parameters. We have problem with checking performance. With, probably with explain, right? And we have because if select is okay, but if it was update or some heavy query, it wouldn't be good to check it on production. And finally, if we want to check, to verify index idea, of course on production it's already like it's not a good idea to find to do it on production. But on other environments, we have we might have less data. So I will show you, okay, I will show you explain. Just running explain is not, it's not bad because we don't execute query. We see it's expensive, sex scan. Of course, we might want to have index. And uh, later we, in tutorial, we will play just with this example. Nothing, nothing. It's a simple example. We will play with it and try to identify these pro, uh, procedural gaps uh, in uh, uh, process, in the process of optimization. So let's return to slides. Uh, and 
we um, these gaps let's talk about a little bit about these gaps but before we proceed let's split our activities to two uh, separate um, separate uh, sets of activities first set is macro analysis and macro analysis it, it's what we did when we uh, applied pg stat statements or we analyzed logs well logs is uh, like individual queries and we see individual queries and if we had auto explain enabled we will we will we would have like micro analysis uh, plans but usually we process logs um, in aggregated form using pg badger or something else but pg badger is the most popular tool uh, and we still want to see the whole picture uh, so both approaches are macro, macro analysis approach and second approach is micro analysis here we applied explain explain is is analyzing a single query alone we don't care about other queries at this point and this is i call this i call micro analysis and by the way and documentation of official postgres documentation also mentions it uh, if we run explain on production we also affected by uh, background workload and this is also not not good because if we want to check pure execution pure uh, analyze it without any random queries we don't we don't control them so we we might have uh, very different results in different minutes so we want again we want to run it or not on production uh, these these are two uh, two uh, two parts of our analysis uh, usually right so macro and micro and um, uh, i identified also pro pro uh, the steps pro tips when we already performed our macro analysis we identified uh, bad bad segments bad uh, query groups by the way bad means may mean different uh, things and we will discuss uh, this topic also not only total time but other metrics uh, we already already identified we already found some optimization by the way in macro analysis we, we may want to apply mac, micro optimization optimization or macro optimization we will talk also a little bit about it and then pro, pro step is to be able to ensure that other segments of our workload are not uh, affected negatively because sometimes for example if we created a lot of indexes we may slow down uh, right operations and similar in macro micro analysis when we run explain in a separate environment we found solution again in micro analysis we may decide apply macro change for example increase work mem globally or or we may, may decide just cre create to create a, a individual index and solve particular problem again pro step is ensure to ensure that other queries are okay usually like it's very rare i i don't see it a lot in in companies it's quite advanced topic to have it for every change to have uh, everything verified and we only building such uh, such uh, systems okay and this this is how we can like our very abstract look at tools we have macro analysis we have micro analysis and macro we, we may have in form of graphs some monitoring system or, or in form of uh, tables i i my personal opinion both are important uh, graphs help us to understand historical uh, perspective so we can see when problem started when it ended did we have spikes and so on but uh, graphs lack details so uh, table view can provide much more details and we will i will describe our own instrument our own tool uh, postgres checkup uh, to just to give you an idea how many details useful details you may you may have if you use table approach but again uh, monitoring is very very big topic it's it's uh, worth having a query analysis and monitoring with macro analysis and monitoring based on pg statements i suppose because it's like standard de facto right now with all uh, spikes and so on and micro analysis also has uh, several uh, visual, visual uh, views first if you're a big fan like me uh, big fan of psql you probably prefer just regular textual form of explain uh, uh, comment comment output but uh, 
last month we see very well developing uh, new visualization tools if there are old ones and new ones i will I, this i will show you and this is quite i'm quite excited excited to see how this area of postgres ecosystem is being developed so and we we have this this is our like workspace right so we have macro we have micro micro analysis we have some tools uh, tools may vary, vary of course and we have uh, methods and micro methods may be applied in macro analysis and micro analysis and macro methods also may be applied in micro analysis and micro analysis it's like it's not it's not like uh, uh, it's like different uh, axis of uh, dimensions different dimensions but what kind of gaps we do we have here three gaps first gap is uh, it's hard to switch be between macro and micro why because pg stat statements they, doesn't have uh, parameters it doesn't have plan examples so if you see select something from table where column equals something it may mean sequential scan it may mean index scan depending on values so inside one query group in pg stat statements we may have uh, two absolutely different uh, execution uh, paths. So we need to find parameters before we proceed with optimization ideas because what we use in optimization, parameters we use, may not match with real production workload. And this is a big problem. And I will show you how Postgres is developing there and what kind of ideas uh, there are to, to, to close this gap. Next gap is where we run explain analyze again i already showed you that it's if it's production okay select is, is not a problem it may be very uh expensive and affect your your buffer pool state and the bu buffers and uh, caches in general but if it's something very like for example deleting million rows it's not a good idea to check it on production believe me completely bad idea uh, so it's better to the solution is simple but hard to achieve simple in in theory you just need this absolutely identical identical environment and run everything there but uh, we have better solution we will discuss it uh, in the end and finally third gap is how to uh, thoroughly check changes we have how to uh, how how to what we developed how to change that like index idea how to it's 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 I, like question to everyone where do you if, if you see some big problem on production where do you run uh, create index uh, maybe concurrently is it on production still is it like you creating indexes uh, on, like on, in runtime without bypassing uh, migration tools and so on it's it's a problem because we want to check without affecting production. We want what, what if our index was terribly wrong? That's why this this these gaps actually I believe are reasons why Postgres DBA um, expertise is considered like black magic because it's hard to it's hard to learn this. You need many to spend many years not to make mistakes because production uh, mistakes on production are maybe very very expensive. So we need better environments actually. Again, so these two, uh, gap number two, number three, it's all about better environments, better staging or development environments, testing testing environment. Okay, what kind of macro analysis tools uh, we, we have? I will talk about uh, sources of data for macro analysis. I won't talk about uh, monitoring tools because it would take one hour or so. It's a huge topic. Uh, but I do some highlight. I will do some highlights. First, we have PGStat activity. Of course, uh, this is our like very like central uh, source of some truth, and it's available by default. Of course, it's very standard, like the same with PG logs, uh, and we can check uh, backend. We can we can see queries there. We can see a state, and uh, thankfully, uh, since like five years ago or so we can see weight events and weight event types, which is very exciting feature and still very underestimated by uh, people who create monitoring systems and so on. I will show some examples how to use it. So, uh, but what, what kind of limitations persistent activity has? It has first, by default, it's only uh, 1024 bytes. You can adjust it, but it's 
it will require restart and I mean, you can adjust uh, limit for query, but usually when you're already dealing with problem, uh, you first time you see database, this is not adjusted. Uh, so you need to deal with what you have. And sometimes with complex queries, it's not enough at all. You, you don't see the full, uh, si the, the full text of qu the query. And next, it has some, uh, some uh, timestamps and you need to play with current time, usually clock timestamp, not now because clock timestamp is providing, like because it's not transactional reading from registered activity. And finally you have state and here the like big downside of state it's, is, is that active doesn't mean that it's really active. It, mean, it may mean that it's locked. And sometimes I see like most monitoring tools do, don't distinguish active doing some work and active locked on some other query. And you need to analyze wait, wait, wait event type to distinguish it. And this is a big problem. Like most monitoring tools just will show you active this number and that's it. And it's hard to distinguish. Is, was it locking issue or was it like IO issue? It's hard to distinguish. So that's why maybe you need to analyze wait, wait event type or see PG logs and analyze uh, locking issues or see logs also. In, in the logs, we can see some information about uh, logs and, and blockers and so on. And PG statements, it's a standard uh, extension available everywhere, but you need to install it. And um, uh, it has uh, interesting stuff. It has qu full query, but without parameters. It has a query ID and it has a lot of metrics and number of metrics is increasing in, for example, in Postgres 13, we will have more metrics. I will show you later. And, but it's not enough. PGSA statements is not enough. Uh, despite of the fact that it has a lot of metrics, we still need more. That's why such extensions as PGSAT KCash, QL stats and weight sampling exist. And if you're lucky enough and you're not in RD, on RDS yet or already not yet not there uh, you may consider using these extensions to have to have better view of to have better macro analysis based on pgs statements all, all of these extensions also have query id and you can join information from uh, them with pgs statements pgs.kcash provides information about physical activity like uh, disk activity because uh, by default, uh, Postgres uses uh, operational system page cache and doesn't see operations with disk. It is that kcache unlocks this problem and provides this information. And also about uh, CPU time uh, system uh, and user time, you can distinguish this. And pgqual starts interesting extension from Power Team monitoring, Power monitoring team. You can, you can analyze uh, where and join predicates so uh, to have some statistics and it will show you how what kind of parameters were, were used what parameters were fr frequently used and what what parameters were not frequently used quite quite important to jump between macro and micro analysis and pg weight sampling interesting uh, extension it uh, uh, adds information about uh, weight event types and weight event uh, details uh, to, PG, to like extend PGSTA statements with it. Uh, and finally, also big source of truth is PostgreSQL log. We can see slow queries there. If we uh, adjust log min duration statement, uh, it's not a good idea to have it zero because uh, zero, uh, with zero, under heavy workload, especially if you use syslog uh, and journal D and so on, system will be very slow. Like orders of magnitude slow. So it's better to keep it like half a second or something. Le the less is the better in terms of observability, but you get observer, observer effect because uh, the, this obser obser observability actions already slow down your system. And uh, in, Post in Postgres log also has information about blocked queries, about canceled queries, uh, various kinds of errors. But the problem with current implementation of uh, Postgres log, it's impossible to split uh, these streams of knowledge to different logs. I hope some, at some point Postgres will have uh, abilities to, to, for better control over logs. Uh, next, 
I already briefly described a lot of a lot of information in persistent activity and persistent statements. But uh, what you really need to remember is that uh, with PGista statements, you can analyze frequency, its calls. You can analyze total time. By the way, it's, I, I, I think it's not very um, good naming because some people tend to, see, to think it's like total of everything, like total of a whole workload, but it's total time only within uh, boundaries of particular query group. So if you want to see the whole workload, you will need to aggregate this total time and you will have total, total time, right? So it's like a little bit, a little bit confusing. Uh, you, so frequency, number of time spent, and are you, in terms of amount of data uh, fetched from, uh, from the buffer pool, it, it, it's called hits, and or, or read to the buffer pool from uh, the page cache, Maybe from disk, we don't know. It's called uh, shared bo blocks read. The same with for local local blocks, uh, which are used for in, in, in the case of uh, temporary tables and temp blocks, in, in, which are used in the case of uh, when it's not enough memory. So it's assigned like work memory is too, too small. And some other stuff, uh, it's not important. Uh, I'm excited that like in Postgres 13, uh, we will start to distinguish it's already committed, by the way. We will start to distinguish uh, uh, timing, splitting it to planning time and execution time. And this is quite good because sometimes, especially if we increased uh, default statistics target globally or for particular uh, columns, we may, in the case of complex queries, we may have quite long uh, planning time. Again, plans here quite not like very successful naming, I suppose, because it means how many plans, how many plannings happened, not how many plans we keep in memory, not how many different abstract plans we have, how many plannings happen. So like kind of, you need to check documentation to remember the meaning here. And this is very interesting, uh, especially in the, in the current context of cloud adoption and uh, things like Aurora, uh, well, like, short story, if you use Aurora, uh, you pay for IO and you like uh, SQL optimization is becoming very good profession again, because it saves a lot of money. And uh, Aurora blog has a recent blog post uh, saying, uh, providing example when IO costs were 10 times more than instance cost. And the solution was optimized queries. And uh, interesting that on Aurora, read, reads are, are, are counted uh, as usual. And if you have more memory, you cache better, you have less reads. But for writes, they count only writing to write a headlock. So these guys will help us in the future for Aurora when, it, when Postgres 13 will be there. It's not, it's not soon at all because uh, Aurora adapts uh, major versions slowly. Uh, much slower than, uh, than than we could expect. Uh, so when we have this in Aurora, it will help to save money because we will quickly find queries which produce a lot of write ahead log and we will optimize them and save some money. And as I mentioned, these, these extensions, they uh, are additions to PGSTAR statements. Uh, this, is, this, in, this is also interesting addition. It's um, actually, it it's, um, provides uh, History PG Sentinel provides history of uh, active sessions, so it's it's uh, it's doing samplings like every second fetches information from PG set activity, and uh, we can later analyze uh, to do sampled sampled weight event analysis. I will show you quite good and interesting stuff. So uh, how we can see uh, we can check PG set activity manually like select star from pages activity but there are tools which are doing it like which may you may consider convenient uh, they are providing this information in top like uh, manner so pg top and pg center i find pg, PG center uh, more powerful more features so i tend to use it sometimes not very frequently uh, and uh, we can we will show we will see it uh, in a while in our tutorial but it will refresh uh, and, and fetch persistent activity and show you some details 
uh, and but like these are these are raw queries and you see it like single queries somehow we might think it's good to aggregate them and maybe see what kind of event weight event types uh, we have and this is exactly how uh, first uh, it, it appeared on amazon aurora then amazon rds and then uh, people started to implement it in monitoring systems so Actually, this idea came from, uh, I, I suppose it came from Oracle world. And when we had a lot of users migrating from Oracle, they uh, lacked this ability to see this kind of analysis. And that's why like demand on, on weight of event analysis grown and Postgres finally got it. And now we can have this. This is from, this is screenshot from uh, RDS. So you see that, uh, for example, you quickly see that we have uh, CPU bound uh, activity because green is CPU and this I think IO right so we have CPU and IO and until six something a.m. we had more CPU activity rather than uh, IO this is very good uh, and we can we can select we can see particular queries we can analyze historically every query group uh, but what would you do if you are not on Aurora there is solution uh, it's there is an uh, application written in Java, uh, actually a couple of them, but they are, I think one was derived from another, uh, Ash Viewer. Uh, first one is can work with Oracle and Postgres, and second one can work only with Postgres. That's why P in in the naming. But uh, but this uh, this like I tend to prefer this one because it has more details, Postgres specific details, and. It, Absolutely in the same manner, it, it uh, fetches data from PGSET activity once per second or per five seconds. I suppose you can, uh, you can uh, adjust it. And then it aggregates weight event type information and provides this uh, beautiful graph. And you can see that, C again, during this time we had CPU uh, bound activity. We can uh, manually select this period of time and see top uh, queries here. And we can fetch query text there and jump from macro analysis to micro analysis. But again, by default, we will have only 1024 bytes uh, limit for query. So if you have huge query, you may end up uh, with uh, cut, uh, like, like cut query. So it's hard to do micro analysis if you have only part of query, right? So, uh, and the interesting that it, this tool you can use it ad hoc, like I need it right now, let's check it. But what if we learn that like uh, one hour ago, we had some problem. In this case, of course, it's not possible. You will connect and see only new data. In this case, you need to have uh, this uh, extension called PG Sentinel. And this tool understands that PG Sentinel is installed and fetches information uh, from the past, uh, from, uh, from this extension data and uh, immediately draws uh, everything from the past. This is all what I found in, in terms of open source, uh, open source uh, tools. And I don't see good uh, analysis of weight events in monitoring yet. I saw only this also in POVA monitoring, but it's, it's quite basic uh, analysis. We cannot uh, see the list of, at least I didn't find it. Uh, we cannot see if I, I didn't find uh, how to see the list of bad queries, how to jump from macro to micro here. We have something like this looks like uh, only the beginning. And I hope uh, this monitoring and other monitorings start to develop this quite important and very, very useful for people coming from Oracle world uh, to tooling. Uh, let's uh, finally do some steps. So please uh, switch to uh, Catacoda if you logged in. And let's start uh, with steps number one and two. So first step is very simple. We just check that everything works. Uh, I already did. Uh, oh, I'm already here. So let's just select now. Then uh, I'm checking that PG start statements work, works. I have something. Good. Next step, step two. So at step two, we have uh, we are checking the content of uh, pgstat activity uh, so we see 
okay, we see a lot of queries happening in bank background. We see that most of them are select count star. And, but we don't, we have no idea by default how long they are executed, what kind of things are happening. And we need to refresh manually. So it's not convenient. It's just a snapshot of current picture. And we need to do some math with uh, timestamps and so on. So to have some convenient tool, you can start using PG Center. Uh, with PG Center, uh, there is drawback of PG Center. You need wide screen, fortunately. Otherwise, you won't see query. So make it wider. And you will see it live, right? We see it live. We see we see a lot of select star. We see uh, interesting load average, additional like top style information, how much memory was used. If you press shift, if you put focus there with click and put shift shift B, you will see, for example, you will see disk I/O information like I/O stat like. So you can combine uh, this like raw view, raw uh, look at. Uh, queries currently executed and disk activity. Quite interesting tool, uh, maybe useful. And what I like about this tool, you don't need to install anything on, on your server and you may use it for anything. And of course, if you use it for RDS, you will not have this IO style, uh, IO data, IO activity of disks, but you will, of course you will have uh, query activity and it has a capability to, to do macro analysis, you can uh, ask uh, not only PG Center top, you can ask uh, to record some, um, uh, some data from PG stat st statements, and then uh, PG Center will calculate uh, diffs between two snapshots of PG stat statements and will provide you interesting uh, insights about PG stat statements. Uh, so perform macro analysis actually, like ad hoc macro analysis. Any questions so far? Any, everything works for everyone? Actually, we're good with timing, so I'm I'm going to maybe to yeah, it's good. Okay, no questions. Uh, let's return to slides. It was very basic, I know, but uh, more interesting things are coming. Okay, so. Uh, if we talk about PG stat statements, I personally see four ma major approaches to analyze it. First is by total time. I always start with it because this is how we can reduce uh, load to our system. This is how we can prepare to scale better. If we have some queries which have a lot of total time values, uh, higher total time values, and we manage to reduce those values, it means uh, less CPU time is spending, less resources are, spe are spent uh, in general. So we just order by total time, get top N, top five or top 10, and try to optimize each of these query groups. Uh, but in interesting point, we can, when we optimize uh, focusing on total time, we can approach se several uh, sub strategies. For example, we can see that uh, average mean time. Mean time is already good enough. For example, one millisecond. And, but we see that the frequency, so calls is very, very high. In this case, we go to application developers and tell them, do you really need to run 2000 times uh, per second of such queries? And usually the, their answer is no. This is what, this is, we didn't want it. it. This is a mistake back in our software. We are going to fix it. And it's already a win. You don't need to, to perform any micro or macro optimization here. But sometimes you see calls are okay, like 10, 100, less than 1,000 per second. And mean time is, is quite big. In this case, you want to minimize mean time. And mean time, um, it's, there are several, okay, several paths to, to optimize the timing. This is already maybe uh, ma ma may you may need mac macro or micro optimization steps. Sometimes you need to mix approaches and try to decrease average time and also decrease frequency. Uh, as a result, total time will be mutually, like they mutually help in, in the uh, increased total time, overall total time. Next, uh, we when we analyze top, for example, top 100 by total time, we still may miss very, very, very fast queries, which are very, very frequent. 
and why we need to bother about it. Uh, because even if they are executed during like five, 10 microseconds, if it's happening uh, five times, 5,000 times per second, it's not good to have so high frequent uh, selects, select one, for example, a very common case, situation. Because these queries are leading to high context switches and still produce a lot of, so total overall total timing is fine, but context switches are high and still we have this load. It's better to get rid of such very frequent queries as well. So I that's why I distinguish top end by calls separately. And in my practice, I had situations when even top uh, 100 and 150 uh, didn't show uh, very frequent, uh, like three or 5,000 uh, per second query group because it was number 170 or something. And next, by meantime, I don't know why people sometimes start with this. This is for our scalability and overall performance. It's not the main approach, but I understand uh, situations when situations where it may be uh, very helpful because because if you have high mean time, even if total time is low, frequency is low, it's happening like a couple of times per minute, but mean time is like 10 seconds or 30 seconds. It means that some users are experiencing, like having bad experience, very slow, uh, le bad latency and the application uh, works slowly. So I call this approach is like user oriented. You try to help some users. Sometimes those users may, may wait, for example, some analysts, they, it's their work, they may wait, wait a couple of minutes, but sometimes it's real external users. You don't want to, uh, to lose them because uh, if uh, they see like one minute of execution, they will go. But sometimes also this, this, if it, this mean time is like hours, it may lead to bad problems with master in case of like auto vacuum related issues. Uh, and finally, uh, this is already I touched a little bit related to Amazon and clouds. And when you your I/O is is expensive, it may be expensive in terms of money. It may be also expensive in terms of latency. Again, if you have slow disks, uh, it's uh, it's a mistake to think that everyone is is already on SSD. A lot of HDD uh, is being produced every year, and HDD is still being in, in number of terabytes, uh, petabytes, uh, as HDD is still winning. So we, some, we may have uh, slow disks. So uh, you may want to see top 10, for example, by shared box red and try to uh, minimize this, uh, the, the, like to, to optimize these queries. Okay. Uh, and if, okay, there's we, for example- There's a couple of questions on, um, on uh -huh. the chat. Um, can I install Pash on the remote server? Oh, uh, Pash is a Java application. So you install it on the remote server, but I suppose it needs a graphical UI. So yep. I mean, it needs to be on your machine, I suppose. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure about web versions or something, unfortunately. As I've said, it's like, I see it's very, very like not well-developed area. Only tools are only like started to be being developed. And if you have interest here, it's very good area to start uh, doing some open source activity and develop more tools, definitely. And maybe help some monitoring. That that might be related to the next question is, doesn't Pash and PG Sentinel bring much load to the system? Oh, uh, overload like and observer effect is my favorite topic. I don't know exactly. Uh, of course, if you, for example, without PG Sentinel, if you just install Pash and use it. It means that you uh, selecting from pages activity, for example, every second. It's quite. It's we, we may experiment and measure this overhead. I didn't do it yet. It's an interesting question, and it would be good to understand. Uh, before you're like sometimes, right now, just keep in mind that this thing exists. If you have problems, you may just want to do something. If it's already bad just use it. But if you want to use it on a regular basis, maybe it's worth uh, benchmarking and analyzing uh, overhead and uh, trying to understand uh, this uh, sampling period, maybe one once per second. It's good for observability because you will have more precise data, but it's maybe uh, um, 
it, it has some cost of fetching from a persistent activity and producing some load. Okay. Uh, yeah, Katakoda prices. I, I didn't find, you need to, uh, uh, question about Katakoda. I like this Katakoda thing and not find prices though. Right now I'm using free Katakoda. You can create tutorials on it. It's quite, quite uh, convenient. But uh, I saw, for example, uh, Crunchy data, they also had some tutorials you can uh, see in their uh, learning portal, you can see their tutorials. And they, they don't have uh, this requirement uh, to log in using GitHub or something. So I also wanted it, that's, that's when you want to pay them and you need to write to their support. They already answered me, but uh, it was not, like their um, selling model is quite basic and involves human uh, actions. So you need to write them to support the e email. Okay, uh, any more questions related to optimization topic? No? Okay, let's proceed. I like it's quite complicated, a lot of stuff, but I consider this very important. And sometimes people don't understand these metrics that producer statements provides. So I started to really well understand them only when I created this. I created, uh, well, not only I, uh, my team helped me a lot and continues helping me. We had this tool uh, open source for automated health checks. And it, what it does, by the way, with PGSTA statements, we have also a couple of other problems. Uh, first of all, we PGSTA statements doesn't remember when it was reset. So if you just observe these metrics, you cannot understand anything because, okay, we have timing, blah, 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 say, uh, seconds or hours, what and what. We need to understand when it was reset to, to understand how many seconds, uh, uh, how, how many, for example, uh, buffers were uh, processed per second or something like this. Uh, so you may want to remember his, uh, resetting time yourself or you may want, and most tools do this, have two snapshots and calculate deltas for each metric, for each uh, accumulative met metric. And then, uh, right, and then you, you may, uh, like this is one thing and another thing is that uh, so that's it actually about uh, drawbacks of PGSA statements. So you calculate uh, two, two um, snapshots, you get two snapshots, for example, 10 minutes between them, you calculate deltas. And then what I uh, like decided to do is you, you can see these, uh, so you need two snapshots, you, cal you calculate deltas and you have these deltas, right? So you have deltas for calls. During these 10 minutes, we have this amount of calls. During these 10 minutes, we have so our system, our CPU spent this amount of milliseconds uh, in, to in total. We processed, uh, we fetched this number of rows and we hit this number of buffers in, in a buffer pool and read this number from page cache. Quite interesting. But next second, like I call it sub row, next sub row, we divide these deltas by uh, observation period. And we get like streams. We know how many calls per second we have. It's QPS, like queries per second. Okay, only two queries per second, it's very low. By the way, this is the same example with non-optimized query as we have in Katakoda. So two, two queries per second, we are spending eight seconds every second on two vCPUs. This, this is not linear at all. So when you have slow, when database behavior is not linear, when everything becomes slow, it's, it can, it can like, like explode. This is what we're observing. We have, we're spending eight seconds every second. It's for, on two CPUs, not good at all. And we are fetching two rows. It's like min, means one row for every uh, query. And we see uh, 98, 60K, Blocks, you need to multiply it uh, by uh, eight uh, kibibytes and you will have uh, amount of bytes you are, this like stream of heating from a buffer pool. Of course, we, we should understand that the same uh, buffer may be uh, hit multiple times during every second, it's, it's normal. And reads, also a lot of reads are happening from page cache, I su suppose from a, a file system, for, from disks. Uh, as well. And third sub row, third sub, sub row is where we 
uh, we should it should be shifted a little bit. So so ah okay. So per second, third sub row, we divide every metric by number of calls. Of course, when we divide by uh, calls by number of calls, we always get one. That's why here you always see one. But when we divide uh, total time by number of calls, we will get uh, average duration for every call. So it's our average latency for our queries. It's three seconds average for this group. For this group, it's important because uh, this group is our major uh, influencer of bad performance. Then we divide number of rows. So, okay, just one row because it's select, select star, count star. And here we have average uh, number of buffers hit and read for the buffer pool uh, cache performance. Uh, and we see a lot of uh, every query hits a lot and reads a lot from page cache to, to the buffer pool. Uh, and we already see uh, why we have this problem. We, we, if we Even without a micro analysis, we already suspect that we just to get one number, we need to process enormous amount of data, right? So we lack indexes, I suppose, because indexes is what helps us to uh, minimize number of pages we deal with. And this is very important, by the way, I will repeat it several times during our tutorial. Uh, in indexes and in databases are all about minimizing number of buffers. That's why buffers information is always top number one. If sometimes sometimes it's may, it may be more important than, than timing, which is not linear. Buffer, number of buffers, amount of work to do is very stable. We have database, okay, somebody is inserting, but it's not happening like uh, in next second, we won't have two times more buffers uh, we, uh, for our target. Uh, it's, it's quite stable. And if we just have snapshot, uh, eliminated any workload and we just analyze it, it's 100% stable. So amount of data we need to deal with, it's here. That's why number of buffers, it's like during optimization, I personally consider it is as number one metric above total time. Uh, it's not common, but this is what it's, this is my experience and my opinion. And uh, finally, final sub row. It's just percentage. So we have we see that like almost hundred percent of all, all, all total total time is associated with this uh, query group. In, in number of calls, it's just one point five percent. So like very low amount of queries leads to a lot of time spent and a lot of hits and again uh, uh, reads here uh, this query this is bad query we need to optimize it this is how macro analysis looks like this is what i usually do uh, i usually check these numbers and understand behavior of every query what we like here is historical data of course we need good monitoring to see when it started when it ended do we have it already three months as, I, as I've described or no. Okay, uh, also Postgres checkup, we also aggregate, we call it first word analysis. We just use first word. It's good if you have ORM. It's bad if you, if you like, I personally uh, love you using PLPG SQL and the right functions. Uh, functions you always call with select even if they modify data. So, uh, so this analysis will not work for functions, but it work, works in, if, you, if your developers are using o, object relational mapping or something like this. And you will see how, like what's, what is the ratio of uh, selects in total time? What is the ratio of selects in uh, streams of hitting and reading uh, buffers uh, from buffer pool and to buffer pool from page cache? The same with updates. So we, we can understand, do we have uh, if we have a uh, write heavy workload or it's mostly uh, read, uh, read, uh, read only uh, workload or just read, mo uh, read uh, mostly workload, right? And finally, we aggregate, it's like the top, the highest level, we aggregate everything and just have this one big row, uh, uh, always 100, 100, 100% everywhere here. But we understand our QPS, we understand how many rows we process per second, uh, how many rows at each call processes hits, reads, streams, per call, everything. Again, this is very, very, very good detailed, like uh, like during this period analysis, but it lacks historical data. So that's why we need to have monitoring. And uh, it's good if you have both approaches. Monitoring will show you historical, but only like top of iceberg. 
Uh, and this is the whole iceberg. You can analyze it very well. So uh, also, uh, also, I'm not going to describe you today monitoring. It's, as I've said, it's another big topic. But I have link here. This is our, our, I mean, our Russian community, Rupozgus, our new effort to get good overview of, of what we have right now in terms of Postgres monitoring. And on this link, you can find document. Uh, this is like our community uh, effort. We put a big list of what uh, Postgres monitoring should have. And right now we are doing more uh, thorough analysis uh, of everything like PG Watch, POVA, PMM, Zabbix, um, commercial things like PG Analyze uh, or uh, Datadog, Akimeter, and so on. And we are checking every aspects of what we would need to see, like starting from query analysis and going to an auto vacuum checkpoint and, and so on. Uh, so please expect uh, some materials in the future. It will be in English. So I'm going to publish, if you follow me on Twitter, I'm going to share our findings. And I think it will be helpful for all uh, people. Like right now, we're still in position when we get some tool and we need to develop more and more on top of it because it's not enough. I hope in a couple of years, we will have better situation. And I hope our overview will help to understand what uh, tools, some tools are missing and what some tools are, have best. So um, yeah, resizing in browser is annoying. It, 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 this, is, this, is, this is true, right? Uh, OK, so let's jump to micro analysis and then discuss again how we jump. First, let's discuss micro, micro analysis itself. Micro analysis is usually done using explain. Explain is, is a very common tool. It's, uh, it's standard, it's, it's already installed, it's in core. And explain itself shows only what planner thought about or thinks right now about how to execute uh, the query. But it doesn't execute the query, so we will, will not see actual, actual metrics. We will see only cost and expected amount of rows. Explain analyze is usually what people use to get uh, to, to check it for real, right? We, we see real numbers, we see timing, real row numbers, but by default, we don't have buffers. I'm a big fan of buffers. Buffers analysis is, during optimization, is more important than timing-based analysis. Why? Because timing is our ultimate goal. We, need, we want to have very, very low numbers for timing. But when we analyze it, we have a lot of deviations and inst instability in timing. We may have a cold cache or something. Buffers will always show us that, oh, we have a lot of work to do. So why, like, imagine we do, did some microanalysis and see some query slow or fast. Why can be query some, some query slow? I see three reasons. First is contention issues. It's a separate topic. So if, if during macro analysis, we see that query spends like one second, but during micro analysis, we see it's only one microsecond and it never uh, is above like 100 millis milliseconds. But macro tells us that average is one second. We should start suspect, of course, uh, locking issues. We need to analyze uh, locking uh, to perform some blocking, locking, blocking analysis and see which query, which transaction blocks which transaction. And this is where we can lose, lose time. Again, in, it, it will, in persistent activity, you will see state equals active. In monitoring, you will see a lot of active sessions. But maybe some of them are doing nothing, just waiting to acquire some lock. This is number one reason. You will not see it in microanalysis because you're alone. You have only one query, no uh, background workload, if it's not on production. I imagine, uh, like I consider the best approach when we don't do it on production. Th then uh, a lot of work to do. This is maybe like the most uh, popular reason when we want to optimize. We just need, we see that query has a lot of work to do. I, I, I skipped here situations when it's pure 
CPU work, work. For example, you have some calculations, uh, CPU heavy functions. It's not common. It's sometimes it happens, but it's not that common. Usually you deal with a lot of amount, a lot of buffers, a lot of data and logical level is rows. This you will see with explain analyze and physical level is buffers. You need to put buffers word to see it. Why uh, I, I prefer buffers because uh, we, we may see that we fetched only one row, but we we need needed Postgres needed to deal with thousand buffers because, for example, of bloat. And analyzing both will show us a uh, good sign that we need to deal with bloat first. We need like it's it's not normal to uh, deal with thousand buffers to just to get one row. Normally, even if we consider indexes, we have few buffers to to get to fetch one row. So it, uh, unless this row is very wide and, uh, and toast is involved and so on. So that's why it's better to have both and buffers uh, is very important. So uh, actually it's IO centric analysis, microanalysis. Uh, you understand the amount of IO that needs to be done. Okay, and uh, also explain uh, in Postgres 11, explain and analyze will get uh, information about how, how much world data is generated also good. Right, so we have not only in uh, we will have it not only at macro level for PG statements, but also in, at macro, micro level at in explain like analyze command output, and uh, slow disk is another uh, reason. So you may uh, it's uh, it's really easy to forget. Sometimes you just run explain analyze and that's it. You see some data already uh, draw some conclusions, and then suddenly realized oh. I need to run it twice to see it, uh, to see the output when caches are warmer, maybe like hot caches. And no disk I/O is involved. So usually, a, a rule of thumb is run it twice uh, and uh, run it once to see with cold caches, twice with hot caches, and consider both situations. And depending on uh, how your database. By the way, uh, so some. Um, Jumping back, if you see here in in uh, shared blocks thread, for example, in uh, report number, uh, this uh, report uh, uh, total aggreg totally aggregated report, if you see here that number of uh, b um, blocks which which were read is low per second, here we have it quite significant, right? But if it's low, it means that your database is pretty much uh, uh, your um, working set of your database data which you need uh, often it's 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 it fits uh, the buffer pool size so it's quite a good situation when you compare this number and this number you uh, see that okay effectiveness of our buffer pool is high so this is how you can check uh, uh, the buffer pool effectiveness in, like, considered it is like a cache and in this case uh, you want to care about uh, uh, like you already in memory, so you need to consider that you you can you you should uh, suppose that your uh, buffer pool state is warmer, right? And uh, definitely repeat it twice because uh, second attempt will be closer to production. Any questions so far? Because it's like a lot, a lot of metrics and so on. Okay, no. Okay. Uh, a few words about observability problems during macro micro analysis. This is uh, this is uh, easy to forget. It's mentioned in documentation several times. Uh, if you run explain and analyze, you will have different numbers. Uh, timing uh, buffers will be the same because the amount of work is the same. That's why I prefer it. By the way, one more reason. But uh, timing on this exa this is example from documentation, and if you just create a table. Uh, 100,000 rows, uh, turn timing on, on, do count multiple times. This is predictable, re repeatable result. And then the same with explain and analyze. Uh, due to the fact that Postgres explain and analyze needs to analyze all operations and uh, measure timing of, of them, uh, we have observability effect. So we our results are affected by the fact we want to observe. We want details, okay we affected negatively the result, right? This is very important to remember because uh, otherwise you may want, you may see, you may uh, expect very different. Uh, 
actually if you expect uh, 19 milliseconds button production it's eight it's a good um, direction to be mistaken uh, to, to have mistake but uh, sometimes uh, in, in some situations it's not good at all to be mistaken even, even in this direction and just a few hours ago uh, my, my friend alvaro hernandez from ongres published blog post about this particular problem he managed to get uh, eight times difference for explain analyze in the aws uh, 700 overhead 700 percent overhead so read this blog post a lot of details and uh, considerations about this problem uh, let, let, it's called uh, explain analyze maybe lying to, uh, to you i would i would say it, it almost always lying but at what at which extent it's worth checking uh, actually i would add here that important note if you are going to use explain an ex auto explain uh, extension, which will automatically uh, log not only uh, queries but also plans, actually actual plans, uh, which we had at the moment uh, when a query was executed. If you enable timing, this overhead is not what you want to have at all. So please measure your system, check this overhead, benchmark it, to do micro benchmarks, and then uh, make decisions. And I, I was not surprised about this. Well, 700% I'm surprised. Two times I'm not surprised. I knew this. We recently discussed, with, discussed it with Alvaro. But what I, what I'm, I was uh, surprised about is that even without timing, if we consider only buffers, which uh, you already learned I'm a big fan of, uh, without buffers, analysis without buffers and with buffers also shows some uh, difference. So. Analyzing number of buffers for each node also um, gives you uh, some overhead and negative impact. So it's also, if you use auto explain even without timing, only with buffers, also check uh, overhead on your system and just know that you have this overhead because otherwise you, you may have surprises and degrad degraded performance. Uh, okay, that's it about this topic. A uh, few words about visualization tools before we proceed with some practical work. Uh, I'm excited uh, about uh, currently, like the, about current picture. We have good competition here. This uh, type of visualization we have many years. It's from uh, a standard tool, which I personally don't use at all and uh, no chances uh, that I will start using it uh, due to a bunch, bunch of reasons. I'm a big fan of... Uh, uh, PSQL and uh, other visual visualization tools, but it has embedded uh, capability to visualize, uh, explain data. And I like what I like here is this uh, that that like arrows width differs. I'm not sure it's it's uh, related to timing or buffers. I suppose it's timing because like my my uh, if, if Bruce is listening. I, I want to convince Bruce because we, right now we have discussion in hackers uh, mailing list about buffers. Uh, my personal strong opinion that buffers being turned off affects all observability tools and most of them don't care about buffers. They don't include it into consideration. We don't have it in monitoring. We don't have it in visualization of mi micro analysis of, exp of, of explained data and it's bad. We need to focus on buffers more often it's more it's um, it's really useful and convenient and productive i suspect this is about timing these these different widths i'm not sure uh next uh old good uh, explain depeche.com from hubert lubashevsky uh many years it helps a lot of developers i personally don't like it likes buffers completely no buffers here i like why Okay, we, we have it here, but no nothing in this visual, visualization part. We have it only here, but I see it in PSQL, uh, and that's it. So, uh, like, okay, and I'm also, I'm, I personally don't, I'm not good with, like, colors analysis. I cannot uh, see that this color is more stronger that, than that, uh, in, like, two times or three times. It's hard to analyze for me. But still, it's very helpful. I see a lot of people are using it, and I, like, this is a default option to visualize, uh, explain output for many people. Uh, quite new approaches. There is a 
we had internally in our team, we had uh, flame graphs, uh, attempt to visualize with flame graphs uh, idea. And we used buffers and timing. And you see buffers on the top because buffers first analysis is what I prefer. And I, I uh, advertise it. Uh, so we have uh, two types of flame graphs. Usually buffers flame graph is, this is inherited again from Brandon Gregg's work of analyzing uh, system performance of Linux and other uh, operational systems, including FreeBSD and so on. Uh, we, like this idea came to mind to dif different people at the same time. I saw implementation for Oracle. I saw also PG Flame appeared uh, several months ago. And by that time we already had implementation internally, but it's also like, it's also hard to use because you don't have important details about what is, what was being executed there. But still it, it can, what I like here, it's, it provides you very quickly. For example, you see that sex scan uh, in, in terms of timing, it was slightly more than index scan. They are comparable, not 10x, not 2x, almost the same. You very quickly see it uh, with colors, it's hard. With uh, width, it's simple. And usually buffers uh, flame graph, uh, it's quite boring because everything good is happening on leaves, so on top. Uh, and uh, then just you already got all the data and you just process it. Sometimes uh, there are exclusions to this rule, but uh, usually it's solved. Uh, but we see here for that, that uh, hash scan, uh, sex scan uh, here, here, it was, it fetched much less data than index scan, right? Much less, but spent almost more, even more time. So it's quite an interesting uh, way of looking at uh, microanalysis. Next, uh, I really love this product and uh, how it's uh, like direction it's being developed in. Uh, from Dalibo company. Uh, they took uh, Postgres explained visualization path and uh, reworked it, uh, called it path two. And I don't like this at all. Why? Because this is my personal opinion, of course, but again, colors, I cannot, mm, I cannot distinguish like this color is stronger than that. It's hard to me, but they, they also like realized this flame graph approach is uh, good. They did it like 90 degrees and uh, ended up with this uh, very wonderful thing. I, I like it a lot. You can choose timing on buffers here and see hits, reds, and you see hits and reds in terms of buffers or in, in terms of timing, which was the most expensive. Very quickly, you identify the weakest points in your plan, right? So why it is expensive? Uh, here we don't have, like, here we have colors. How, like, darker is expensive. It's like, it's hard to me. How, how more expensive. This, this is what I do like. I hope they will develop this left part more than right part. It, it, it's very promising. It's my opinion, of course. I, I'm, I don't think uh, everyone has the same opinion. So check this uh, tool. This is good. We also have good tools, uh, but they are partially, I mean, in Russian Postgres ecosystem, unfortunately, I, I already asked them like, uh, publicly, please guys, uh, translated to English, this explained tensor, tensor.ru, I think it's very, very, very also powerful. They have buffers on the right. They started from a table like uh, visualization like uh, Depeche does and extended it, did more visualize and colorful approach and extended with buffers information. So we, we see here, okay, it's col colorful, but uh, not, not like, at least it, it has it. And they have visualization uh, with uh, like you know, three of execution and so on. But unfortunately, partially it's in Russian, so it will be hard to you if you don't understand Russian. So I hope they will translate it. Okay, let's uh, finally switch to our uh, tutorial. We have uh, more steps to do, much more. So let's proceed with step three. I'm going to also repeat it. Uh, we will do some macro analysis first. Uh, let's launch uh, psql demo one. I hope uh, sessions are lost. I'm sorry, I was too 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 slow. Uh, let's uh, start and wait a couple of minutes again. Uh, we can discuss something if anyone uh, has questions. We can discuss topics I covered while it's uh, launching again.
I see that many people do not agree with me in terms of uh, buffer centric approach. They say buffers, I never used it a lot. It's not very important, but I suppose it's because it's not default. Like it's uh, partial at least, and we need to make it default. So I hope we will find more reasons to, to do it. And uh, default is very important because most people are just using defaults. It's always so. Like customization is for like more advanced users only. Okay. Any questions? We have like half an hour. I think we will finish in time. Uh, and uh, but we we can start discussion right now while I while it's being uh, launched. Right, uh, I see in chat that uh, somebody, uh, oh, it's, uh, Pavel Golub uh, sent link to flame graphs. Yes, there is a library of flame graph and it's, it's used in many, many applications. But also there is PG underscore flame, which is particular implementation of flame graphs for Postgres uh, explain output analysis. Uh, we need to wait until PG star statements is created. So. In, in background, it's been prepared still. Let's see with logs. There's a question about uh, temp files in the Zoom chat. Oh, I didn't check Zoom chat. Okay, I'm going to fix this. Right, temp files. Yeah, could there be a situation where a query sometimes creates temp files, temp file, and sometimes does not. While the value of work mem is the same, I saw the temp occurred at a time when the system was busy. I ran the same query when the system was not busy, it did not create temp file. Maybe I remember it wrong, but I just wanted to ask. Uh, I don't think it was exactly so. I suspect it was not so. I, the thing is that a uh, temp file is created when work mem is not enough. We need more memory for our uh, sort operation or join operation, and uh, it doesn't fit to work mem. Interesting point that one query can consume, may consume multiple, multiple times of work mem. Uh, it may consume less than work mem. So work mem is not allocated. We, if your query is very simple, a very simple all of them, you, and you have, for example, max connections uh, 300, and you can put one gigabyte of work mem. And if you multiply 300 to, to one gigabyte, you, you don't have such so, so, so uh, many um, bytes in memory at all. But you will never reach this uh, limit because, uh, first of all, because connections, uh, and if you use some connection puller, uh, you minimize number of active backends. But also because queries are not consuming this amount of data because it's not needed. But when it's needed, uh, all work mem may be consumed and multiple times. And this adds a lot of unpredictability. Um, it's hard to predict uh, how to tune it properly. I see that most of systems, uh, many systems, not most, many systems uh, like uh, overcommit in terms of memory. They, they put much more, if you multiply it uh, like work mem to max connections, and if you consider that uh, Every backend may consume multiple times work mem. We don't have so amount of memory. But uh, what happens? I think I think what happened in your case, uh, you uh, had different parameters. And if parameter involves, for example, if you have uh, just I id equals one, id equals two, but try to update the row with id, try to turn off auto vacuum and update id with id one say million times, you will have huge bloat. And uh, if, if you check explain analyze buffers, here you only buffers will show you what, what is happening. You will see how many buffers needed to be fetched to get this ID number one. ID number two will still be like one buffer or if it's index scan, okay, three or two buffers were fetched uh, from either buffer pool or uh, page cache or both. And that's it. So yeah, okay, thank you, I got, got it. I think we already, so I think you had just different situations and different uh, uh, sets of data 
uh, to analyze there. Okay, it's still being prepared. Right, we have alter, uh, right, indexes are created indexes. Um, okay, what are, in IRC, I see the question, what are your thoughts on the value of weight-based tuning for Postgres and its future development roadmap. I see that it's very promising and the Oracle experience shows us that it's very, very convenient and just one graph can help you. Well, if it's interactive and you can see the query and see history of particular query. And if you don't have this limit of 1024 bytes, if either it's increased or it's combined with uh, statements, uh, it's very promising. And uh, uh, by the way, in, in commit fest, you may find a patch uh, about uh, uh, a patch to adding query ID to pedestal activity and to logs. This is a very good bridge between macro and micro optimization and analysis. analysis. So it's the same query ID in, in pedestal statements. You see it in pedestal activity. You do a weight, by, weight events based analysis and you see all, all metrics I showed you with Postgres check, checkup, you see all metrics, you can combine everything. And this is a very good uh, overview of everything, right? But right now it's hard to join. I mentioned it there in slides, but uh, didn't, didn't say anything. Right now to join, you may maybe want to use uh, uh, the, the library called uh, PG Query developed uh, by uh, PG, PG Analyze developer Lucas Fidel, and uh, it, it creates another query ID. They, it's called uh, like fingerprint, and it, using this you can match and uh, create your own bridge between micro and macro analysis. When do the stats and PG start statements reset? I, I think is that I tend to not caring about it. If you use uh, um, if you analyze snapshot based you always uh, do some deltas between two snapshots then you don't need to reset it at all uh, some people do reset and for example they reset it uh, every every night but i remember how it was painful when um, changing uh, metrics uh, when some query changes metrics in pg statements it was log free but adding new entry was very expensive and uh, we had bleaches of performance, uh, spikes of, of like latency before, be, because when you reset, we need to, to add a lot of entries. I'm not sure about current implementation uh, in Postgres like 11, 12, which it's worth checking. But uh, a couple of years ago, it was a problem that if you reset quite often, if you reset it during not very active time, it's fine. But if you reset it during day, you may not notice it like a latency spike two seconds. So all queries were blocked two seconds, but it's not fun actually if you do it quite often. Okay. So uh, I think it's already there, right? Good. So let's proceed with, with steps, uh, with steps uh, three and four quickly. It's quite simple. Step number three, we connect to our database. It's called deep demo one. Uh, and we just uh, see uh, PGSL statements. We see that uh, our this bad guy on the top, we can scroll because PSPG tool is installed, very good tool uh, adding a, a alternative uh, pagination for PSQL. So where is query? It's on the left. Query is here. We have this query select count star. And uh, we, as a, we already paid attention to these metrics, we analyzed this picture on uh, using PG, uh, using Postgres checkup tool. So uh, how would we optimize? Of course, we want to read less buffers, uh, less blocks. We want to do less work. How to do this? Uh, we need to do mac mac micro analysis. And from logs, we see that, okay, we see that uh, this value, uh, current date uh, worth checking. Let's check it. Okay, we see sequential scan. And um, if we check it with explain analyze buffers, we should be prepared to wait up, up to one minute because we saw it's like 40 seconds. With explain analyze buffers, it will be longer as we just learned. So let's just wait a little bit. Uh, 
oh, uh, I'm ask, I, I, I'm asked to, to talk about pigeon analysis. I'm not going to ask in details about monitoring tools, not only because it's longer talk. I, I not, I'm not very well prepared. Right now in community, we have working group in Russian community and we are doing analysis of all uh, monitoring tools, including pigeon analysis. We will have good overview of them quite soon, I promise, like in, in maybe in a couple of months. And uh, pigeon analysis has very good uh, features. That's it. That's all I can say right now. Uh, okay. So uh, we see here that uh, number of buffers hit and read huge. We should multiply it by eight kibibytes and 17 uh, seconds spent. Of course, uh, most of them, most of bytes, most of all of bytes, uh, and most of um, timing was spent for sequential scan. Let's proceed with optimization. Before we do it, this, uh, some more slides, so one more slide quickly. How we just, right now we switched between macro and mi micro levels using logs. You saw me and action, I just checked logs and that's it. Uh, but let's talk about it, this important topic. Uh, first of all, uh, experience DBA might just guess. For example, we see uh, some query abstract one without parameters in PGSA statements. We quickly check uh, contents of table and we see, okay, this is, we, we see this is Boolean value. We can see majority of rows are, has, have true. Let's put true. And I, this is anti-method. I was beaten by this anti-method multiple times. You, you get uh, true, you optimize for very worst case actually. But in practice, we don't have true there at all. We don't. We have only false, for example. And uh, we optimize in the case we are not having on production at all. Not good. So guessing is a, is a, not a good idea. We can use statistics to try to guess. This is more interesting. And but statistics, just static statistics, like distribution of values in tables, it's not enough. We need to know uh, what was used. And here, PG Qual Stats extension, if you can install it, because on RDS you can't, if you can install it, it's a very good, interesting approach. This is dynamic analysis of uh, distribution of values in terms of usage. So this is what exactly what, what you need, and uh, you, can, you can fetch this information from there. But it's quite rare, quite interesting, but rare thing to, to have, unfortunately. Then we can just observe PG Stat activity and try to fetch it from there and hunt, hunt for values there. Sometimes we do it, but again, query may be limited and it's maybe a problem happened one hour ago and, and you already lost this information you don't have. Slow query logging, this is a good thing. And sometimes if uh, we, have, we are dealing with query, which is number one by total time, we can easily find examples in slow query log. log. In uh, all queries, for example, longer than uh, one second, it's controlled by log mean duration statement or more than 500 milliseconds. You see them in logs. So you just manually, you may, may find it manually or you can uh, you can use PG Badger or some uh, autom autom automatic analysis, aggregate them again, and then try to match with PG stat statements using, for example, PG query, good library. This is exactly, exactly what we do right now. We match PG stat statements and PG Badger information from collected from logs with uh, using P pg query lib pg query there are different uh, versions of it for various languages the same with auto explain if you have in this case you will have plans by the way pg analyze has this nice feature i my strong opinion that uh, like like monitoring tools should deal with logs but they are still weak in it, not not like just a few of them try to analyze logs because it's hard topic. You need to find them. You need to fetch them if it's cloud using API and so on and so on. And sometimes fetching logs is so heavy. Also observability, observe, observer effect can kill us again. Uh, but if you have how to explain log mean duration, you match you matched with PGSA statements data and you see plans. Very good. Uh, but not enough. Sometimes we have uh, number one query in tot by total time, but in, in average, it's quite fast. And even max time is, is, is still below our threshold called log mean duration statement. 
what to do in this case. And fortunately, Postgres 12 has the answer. And I remember this discussion. It's I was I was very like glad to see this uh, change. So in Postgres 12, you may say let's log one percent or two percent of all transactions, even if query is fast. Let's log like let's sample. We have sample logging, and you you may have a sample logging on transaction level with uh, without plans or at statement level with plans if you use auto explain. Again, observer effect should be in our mind always. So this is very powerful, and I I don't have good ex a lot of experience with it because Postgres 12 is very rare uh, beast on production yet, but it's very very promising, and we will already have it. So we we can we can already think that it's, it's already in our pocket. So let's just use it when it's it's convenient. And finally, we can we can increase, of course, track activity query size. It will we will need to deploy. It's painful a little bit, usually in in real big uh, setups. And then we can use qual stats I already mentioned and PG weight sampling. They will show you some examples of uh, plans uh, of, of parameters sometimes with plans. So let's uh, now do the optimization itself. We identified bad query. We have particular example uh, today's date. Let's just do some index. Uh, since we have concurrent workload, I'm going to run create index concurrently. Oops, how to switch back. I, I'm, I'm going to run create index concurrently, but if it's just because we don't want to block these guys who are being executed in background. But this, if this is a, a standalone environment, uh, you, you, sh you should avoid concurrently because uh, it will uh, roughly decrease uh, duration of in index building uh, 2x, so two times longer. Okay. Uh, let's wait a little bit and oh, notice that I'm doing index, I'm creating index on expression because if we just have index on date, it will not work because our query uses expression here. So we need to have index on expression. Yeah, extensions, we need to add them to shared preload libraries, painful. Uh, is it in shared buffer? I think some extensions like, I know PG statements uh, do, this extension does, uh, they have own uh, like uh, shared buffer um, uh, area. So they control it. Like when you read from PG statements, you are reading from that area and uh, it's not like actual table, right? So, right, you need to load it and uh, to gather statistics and sometimes these changes may be painful. Um, okay. 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 Index created. Interesting point. If you created index just on columns, no, no extra steps needed. If you created index on expression, Postgres doesn't have statistics for this expression. We need to recalculate statistics for this table to, to, to let Postgres know how values of this expression are distributed, right? So how many these dates, how many that dates? Uh, so we do this, analyze uh, our table. Uh, and we can proceed to uh, next step. Uh, let's reset statistics, uh, PGSAT statement statistics to have fresh uh, view, fresh um, look. Let's wait 10, 20, maybe 30 seconds because, uh, because uh, we need to have, uh, oh, no sleep. There's no sleep. Select to just sleep, uh, like ten seconds or so. Let's. It's function. Yeah. Let's just wait a little bit to gather more statistics and PGS statements, because the, maybe there are slow queries which, uh, if we reset statistics and uh, check uh, raw data, maybe they are not there yet because they are not uh, finished yet, right? So let's um, let's see. Okay, uh, I think what we have we have mean time is already one second. It's already better, right? We had uh, how many ten seconds or so. But worst case is still slow, twenty one second, and fastest case is uh, very fast, less than one millisecond. Cool. So we it looks like we optimized, but still we have some bad guys. 
why so? Uh, any ideas? I think uh, we already have answers, right? Because because I will already discussed it in the very beginning. Uh, depending on parameters, we may have different plans. So that's why we we should not we should consider various uh, options for parameters. So uh, let's compare now. Let's do microanalysis again. Let's compare this guy. It's very fast. Execution time eleven. Well, five milliseconds. Five milliseconds. It's fast. So we deal with only one hundred forty-seven. Um, blocks and all of them are in the buffer pool. You see, I always look at buffer pool, bu buffers first. Okay, I see, I check execution timing overall, but then I analyze bu buffer pools because for me it's the most important thing to understand how much work we have. Next, let's check another value. And here I, I have tip. This uh, date is, is bad, it's very bad. And if we check logs, so now we have a slow log shows us that exactly this date is bad right now. Why so? Any ideas? Um, the only thing I can think, uh, Nikolai, without looking at the data is perhaps uh, it's the data distribution. Um, right. Maybe uh, most right. of the table has that date. And so the planner yeah. uh, is deciding to do a full table scan. Right, so we have ex exactly Glenn. Uh, we have a sequential scan. We have a lot of buffer buffers hit and red, and it's it's not good. So what we have, we have a table filled with a lot of values, a lot of rows for that date particularly. And uh, if you want to do count, it's it's we cannot do it. We need to scan all of them. We can make uh, Postgres uh, use index, but it will be also slow because a lot of work to do. And usually here we need to some to do some redesign. Unfortunately, we need to uh, to do some aggregation in, in advance and keep this data uh, separately in uh, counters. This is usual counters problem. Uh, sometimes we have uh, like if it's really a huge huge amount, uh, like here, how many rows we had uh, here? We have one million rows, so it's 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 slow. So. Let's imagine we did some redesign, so we don't have them here at all. It's like, I know it may sound funny. Let's just truncate the table and get get rid of those uh, rows, con considering that we somehow aggregate it and don't keep it here, or we have some partitioning, uh, and we don't ha have them here. And we reset statistics. Of course, we don't. If we started to run this workload. Uh, it will not degrade uh, fast. We will have good performance, of course. As not right now, everyone is fast, including uh, that query. Not right now, it returns nothing, right? So we have we have very fast performance. By the way, if you want to exit from PG Center or from uh, this uh, output uh, provided by PSPG, you need to press Q. Just if you don't know. So uh, right now, everything everything is fast. Everything is good. We have mean time 50 milliseconds, max time 600 milliseconds. Not so good, but still okay. Actually, that's it about like our very basic. Uh, uh, I highlighted problems like how to switch. Let's uh, see our new small tiny tool in action. It, it's called. Uh, my colleagues has developed it. Uh, this um, thing helps us to quickly see the. Uh, visualization by default it will be depish so we just do this trick we have this we have this uh, output we do catch q echo yes and we have url it was posted automatically and we have it on depish here's how i love uh, i live in p sql already 15 years or so so if you like me uh, consider this small tiny tool it just listens to output. You see the output, and this tool also sees in the parallel. And you can jump to visualization. You can switch to PF2 from Dalibo using this uh, parameter target Dalibo. Let's do it and see our this uh, this plan uh, visualized with using PF2. Let's see it. 
it, re it remembered by default it re shows timing, but it remembered my preferences and it shows buffers. Good. And we see uh, everything gray, so everything is like only hits. So that's it. Uh, one more one more topic is left before we, we finish. We have only 10 minutes. Uh, so I have some extra topics. Uh, I, I'm not going to cover them. Uh, but what I wanted to, uh, to describe how we how we optimize, uh, how we build better environments if we want to optimize not on production, right? We, if we run on production, uh, normal workload affects our observations. We cannot uh, flush caches and check cold caches. We cannot uh, check modifying queries unless we use uh, start transaction rollback, not good. And we, of course, it's not a good idea to check indexes or even schema redesign in runtime. It's absolutely no, not a good idea. On the other hand, if you have tiny pet size development machine, usually most developers have this only. And they develop on, on like on laptop, on small machine. Data is like some fixtures, some tiny, some tiny database. You, you don't have plans. And this is a huge gap between DBAs who have access to production, but they don't write the actual code and developers who are writing code, but they, don't, they cannot check. And to close this gap, what we developed, we are, we're using thin clones based on ZFS or LVM. Uh, it, it's extendable. You can provide your own uh, thin cloning capabilities and extend our, it's open source. You can extend our tooling. Uh, there is, of course, enterprise version. We can do demo. We have graphical interface, CL, uh, CLI, API. But basic uh, brick of our architecture is, is and all, will always be uh, open source. So you can use this uh, and have just one server. For example, you have 10 terabytes database. You can have another special uh, database with special uh, setup, also 10 ter terabytes. With ZFS, ZFS, production can be X4, it can be anything, but this is on ZFS and we continuously update its state. So it's kind of replica. It's better to read it from, from uh, wall archive. And then, uh, and then we can share this server and allow multiple people to use it at the same time. And we can, we can give a everyone here his or her own full size database. And it's very interesting. It will have less shared buffers, but shared buffers uh, surprisingly don't affect the plan structure and buffers time, buffers numbers. So we can use explain there on such thin clones. And we, what we like on Hacker News, somebody uh, named this approach, we, we are preparing uh, disposable databases. So we take database, we do 10, 10 terabytes, we do uh, any checks, including explain, analyze uh, buffers if you want, and we throw it away, throw, throw it away. Uh, it's, it's actually, it's uh, usual, it's by default, it will be thrown away after two hours um, automatically. So this, uh, this tool is called database lab. And this final step is showing how to use it. Let's switch, uh, let's switch to bash. And it's already uh, pre-configured here. And uh, it has API key uh, to work with our uh, database lab setup. It's bigger than here. It, it's like 150 gigs. It has two databases. One is five gig and one is 150. It's somewhere in cloud in GCP. And right now you can ask your own clone. Let's do an experiment. Uh, I never did it at, 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 at such scale. Everyone who is in Katakoda, by the way, if you're checking recording, this uh, API key will expire on June 1st, so sorry. But right now we can request uh, to provision our own um, uh, thin clone. We are limited by size of memory because I guess we have shared buffers, one or two gigs and the amount of memory, I don't remember. So some uh, someone may be not lucky, who like and memory may be not enough, but it's tunable. Let's check. So we, we can say develop a snapshot list using this CLI and see the list of snapshots available. Right now, this, this guy is doing snapshots every hour. Uh, maybe it's post uh, yesterday or something because we decided to increase it to one terabyte to be even more attractive uh, as a demo. 
So we have uh, snapshots every, uh, you can request any snapshot. You can like do some time machine capabilities and walk back and forth. And you can request actually two clones and check uh, if uh, yesterday plans were better than today, right? It's, it's not, it's hard to imagine be with, without such two. So you can check uh, regression of explain of, of um, uh, some query execution. So let's uh, ask for new clone. Oh, clone list. I'm, I'm going to check if, if we have any clones, maybe someone already created. Yeah, okay, I see some clones already created. Okay, one, two, three, we have three clones. So I'm going to ask my own clone. And uh, we are sitting, oh, what clone fla failure. We have three failed attempts. Okay, we have some failure. Sorry about that. Uh, this is, uh, ah, it's, it's bad, but it worked like uh, in the beginning uh, of, uh, sorry. Let's check uh, in graphical interface if we have this working. Uh, what is happening with our instance? Okay, let's create clone with graphical interface. Yeah, we have something wrong there. Demo is down. If uh, some guys from my team are watching, it's uh, it's it's not good. But it happens, of course, with such kind of demos. Uh, I'm so sorry. It's not good. Uh, we have also a chatbot which which provides also, I think also not working, right? Oh, it's working. Okay, at least our chatbot is working. So chatbot is using, it's also by the way, open source, it can be used either, uh, it's open source for Slack version, but web UI currently it's not very open source, we consider in this. So we have chatbot working in, in either in Slack or in web UI. Some people are developing also Telegram and uh, Discord versions. So this is like, I call it uh, serverless explain. Developers don't see data, they see only metadata. Of course, they can fetch particular um, particular values from database with some tricks, but uh, it's everything is recorded, or, or audit log, there is the audit log and so on. But so they, these developers may ask uh, to, to get uh, explained details. For example, uh, for example, let's get this, uh, this, for example, this explain, this select. It should be interesting to see it. Let's ask Joe to run explain. Oh, explain is, uh, I don't, sh I shouldn't use explain. I should use only, it's short. So just explain this query. And it will show us uh, the plan in PSQL format as usual. And we see some summary. We see uh, we see detailed uh, output of uh, PSQL output with buffers, and uh, it's translated with JSON also. It's translated to um, it's like better looking summary. It's translated to bytes if needed. Uh, I've noticed that developers understand bytes much better. If you if we tell them to read one row, you needed to deal with one gigabyte, gigabyte. It's much more powerful than telling the, it, some uh, abstract for them uh, numbers, at least for uh, uh, not very experienced developers. It's more powerful to, to con convert to uh, bytes. And then everything is recorded and we have some kind of visualization installed here as well. So uh, Joe asked the DBLAP to get clone and implicitly, so that's why I call it serverless explain. Developers don't care about where it will be executed and they get automatically uh, their clone. And if we check clones, I think Joe, inst Joe, clone, Joe, Joe works. I think I, I missed, messed up with keys in uh, Katakoda setup, unfortunately. So it worked here and we, we, we see uh, this, is, uh, this is full size, 150 gigs, uh, thin clone. It took only a couple of seconds to provision actually it, rem it remembers. 1.5 seconds. And this is available uh, as open source. Uh, you can install it uh, in your infrastructure and have better uh, better uh, environment for your uh, experiments. First of all, micro experiments using uh, explain and analyze. And uh, since we use the same planner parameters as on production and work mem is the same, uh, plan structurally is the same and the same amount of buffers. And you can create indexes with Joe. You can do anything. 
uh, you can in its separate environment and it's it's uses database uh, database lab and database lab can be also integrated with ci you can give you your test uh, qa experts uh, to do some checks with full size database it can be not only production it may be also uh, some generated staging but big size and you, do, you don't spend a, a, a extra penny at all so it's the same disk because of thing cloning and copy and write provided by zfs in this case it's very very fast cheap very useful i already cannot imagine how i run explain without such approach because on production i i here i can run explain update not caring about anything i can run i can create any indexes and this is how we close this these final two gaps uh, I, I i like I, i've described in the beginning so already almost out of time i think out of time already right so uh final final words about what we learned uh, what i tried to to tell you about today uh, what is seamless optimization it's unified approach when you have micro and macro both uh, working uniformly without smooth transition of your actions between them still a lot of work to do here and i hope if you can support this and you can review this patch it's in commit fast uh, you can find it in my slides please support query id patch it's quite important for smooth transition be between macro and micro next uh, we need to do some analysis and we need to run it constantly and this method seamless optimization the methodology it helps to share knowledge among uh, among your colleagues and make scalable optimization uh, process not black magic only one guy knows it and that's it everyone can what we see in organizations who already adopted this approach uh, database teams started to to grow uh, they started to collect a lot of knowledge they learn postgres much better because they can work with big size databases not not being worried that they can put something some or someone's work down because it's a separate independent environment and finally uh, we collect artifacts and this is how you can collect your own knowledge base and here we have it already implemented in this uh, postgres ai our you can you can right now we're in closed beta but you can uh, sign in and we will contact you and we are uh, allowing to work with our product only after 30 minutes demo where we ensure that, that you understand details but uh, please feel free to sign up we will contact you and we will continue so there is knowledge base and all such optimization sessions are recorded and uh, we can uh, return to our previous experience and share it with other colleagues and have knowledge base around optimization around explain everything i think that's it uh, i have a lot of other materials let's skip them already uh any questions so far there there's no rush uh, okay if you if you want to keep going you can keep going well uh, or you can let's sum up uh, yeah your 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 choice yes a, a couple of more stuff uh please subscribe me, me uh, to twitter i constantly talk a lot about of various uh, postgres related news uh, sign up i already ad advertised it uh, we have open source tools and we will keep like open core model uh, you can build your own infrastructure infrastructure using our tools and we have already a uh, good uh, small tiny but already good community we have uh, first uh, external people who are contributing this is good this is all from our uh, friends from data egret uh, ilya presented earlier today this is very very uh, good uh, like and again brandon greg like uh, look at our observability tools uh, in postgres uh, so good to print it and put to a wall and uh, remember where we can get knowledge our pgstatkcash pgsta statements by the way, I, I would uh, highlight that PGStat Kcache is external, like uh, additional. Unfortunately, it's not it's not available on every environment. For example, in clouds, you may expect not having it at all. But this is good, good uh, to understand the system and how to uh, like in terms of observability. And a couple of uh, like recent, uh, I I from from time to time, these two attempts to analyze what people use and they. Uh, they constantly telling me that they use timing based approach i advertise buffers based approach and i not like uh, it's not good that uh, buffers are so underestimated 
And uh, after I raised this couple of days ago, Vic Fury and created patch. Uh, I know there are there are discussions and uh, questionable uh, dec decisions, but I I ask everyone who is maybe participating and listening to me, uh, please keep in mind the final goal. Final goal is please let's have buffers enabled by default. It's so important to spread this uh, method of uh, analyzing. Uh, it's much po more powerful than timing. And uh, so there are two uh, patches discuss being discussed in Hacker News. Both are important to have better smooth process of optimization and, and switching be between, uh, between uh, um, uh, different methods and actions. That's actually it. Thank you so much. Any more questions? All right, a question about, I, I'm from the, from, uh, the end, I'm reading from the end. Uh, we have how it works, clone, startup, new Postgres instance, right? We have on the same machine, multi-tenant uh, ap approach, like many Postgres instances. Uh, one, I, I called it first, I called it shadow. One instance, is, we call it sync instance. Sync in instance, which uh, is doing synchronization with a production or archive or anything. Uh, if needed, it may be down. It has very small amount, like 200 max, max of shared buffers because we don't need uh, cache there at all. The only purpose of this small Postgres instance just to fetch and replay walls from external uh, source. And then by, by request, we, we launch uh, Postgres based on snapshot, we do clone. With ZFS, we launch another Postgres, of course, with limited shared buffers. But effective cache size we set exactly like on production, even assuming that we don't have so, so much memory on the server. And this is how we achieve the same uh, plan structure. And uh, we, it, it allows us to optimize on this machine. So developers should expect that more often they have like colder cache, more often uh, Postgres will the, the, their uh, Postgres instance will fetch from disk uh, more often, but structurally and buffer-oriented buffer approach works on, on this environment completely. Uh, you need to shut down clients during pg upgrade. I don't, yeah, during pg upgrade, it's quite uh, painful. Uh, you need to actually uh, set up it again because, but usually if you have some pg backrest or VOLG, you just, with VOLG you do, Backup fetch, you, you like it's some maintenance. It's not production environment, so usually you can afford doing it uh, because pitch upgrade is not very frequent uh, th thing to do. But so if if like if we have, for example, ten VCPUs, we may allow up to ten developers working in the same time, time not really noticing uh, actions uh, of each other. Well, there are also auto vacuum activity. We disable uh, transaction ID wraparound prevention because uh, it may block you and you may want, you, you wait. Like we are facing a lot of interesting problems of new kind. This is, this is special Postgres, not production, uh, behaving very differently and having different uh, problems. And I'm very excited to solve them because it's like, it, it feels like adventure. And I see how uh, popular uh, it's becoming very quickly. Developers love this product, and they say like it's magic. I know, and now I I see what is happening, and I don't care about uh, others. I can do anything I want. This is really very very convenient. Okay. Any more questions? Let's check this chat. Yeah, the first call. On PG, PGD, yes, so Postgres directory. Uh, ah, it's uh, from Dan, okay. <laughs> so yes, it's just cloning the, the Postgres directory, we just clone it and that's it, right? That, I find that amazing that you can just do that and then start up another Postgres instance right. on it. I, I, I find that just With smaller buffer fantastic. pool, of course. With smaller buffer pool, and uh, we uh, we encountered like and many people say, oh, ZFS is bad. Of course, some people th thought initially that they need ZFS on production to have this. Of course, no, Z we don't touch production at all. If you have all archive, we uh, launch from there. We do backup fetch, and we don't affect production. That's this slight last thing I would I would do, because I have uh, among clients I have multi-billion-dollar companies, several ones. So, 
and uh, we just uh, launched uh, this ZFS and we, we saw on Hacker News and not only on Hacker News, people um, were skeptical about ZFS, many of them. And uh, we ended up implementing LVM um, version of our uh, tooling. So we have abstraction and right now ZFS and LVM, they are both like modules. So if you want to implement some uh, enterprise storage uh, module for database lab, it's totally possible. And we can have a uh, thin cloning based on copy and write on, on other uh, capabilities. But uh, both LVM and ZFS cloning, thin cloning, it's, I call it local. It's very fast, but it's happening locally. So it's happening on the same machine. If you do it with other uh, means, for example, Aurora has thin clones, uh, you, you, like you, there you will have immediately different instance of Aurora. If you do some thin cloning based on some uh, enterprise storage network attached, you may attach it to the same machine or you may attach it to different machines. So there are plenty of various interesting options. We're exploring possibilities, experimenting, and uh, it's like only the beginning of this technology. So, but right now ZFS is our be best uh, approach to, to have these thin clones. But LVM is also possible. Any ideas? Uh, oh, okay. Hi, Pierre, uh, who is developing this path two. How can it be improved? Well, I would increase it in size. I would probably consider um, maybe getting rid of light diagram. For me, it's not convenient at all. I would take uh, this left diagram on this left one. I would make it bigger and put uh, maybe some text right here, text of... Uh, my my um, output of explain to see what table what what like what what is happening there uh, so it's we thought about this approach also like we would like we would mix textual representation of uh, explain output and graphical just maybe with background uh, feeling this is an, one idea i i honestly like uh, i i like what is already here i see it very convenient uh, I, I also think it would be useful maybe to have some uh, integration API maybe to provide uh, output in form of SVG maybe to integrate with other uh, tools, external tools, just this part. Like, for example, we could uh, put it somewhere to our job bot uh, output and this is, this is uh, for web UI version, this is like a picture. How, uh, if you want details, go and see it there. Uh, that's basically it. it. I think uh, what I saw here for this part, I don't use it a lot, but see, I didn't find uh, buffers. Non-duration rows cost. Okay, no buffers. Well, by the way, I also think uh, it would be interesting. We, we know, like it's not about visualization, it's about uh, observability capabilities in Postgres. We know pgstat.io, pgstat user tables, indexes, and they have uh, operation, operation and tuple statistics. I think it could be also useful to extend uh, pgstat statements and explain and have uh, statistics about uh, tuples, tuples, like how many tuples were um, updated, hot updated, uh, inserted, uh, and so on. It's like, a, I think it may be useful because right now tuple statistics is kind of separate thing uh, separate from query analysis and usually okay i see that this table got this this uh these characteristics of workload but uh, i cannot it's it's hard to match queries uh, match this information to queries and uh, hard to understand what to optimize right so that's actually my considerations but uh right right it's quite quite good Let's let's uh, let me think. I, I maybe will raise this uh, idea. If I have ideas, I will uh, tweet, uh, make tweets, and uh, mention you, of course, to to discuss it. Sure. Thank you for question. I'm I'm very glad that you joined joined our session. Okay. I think I don't see any more questions. If I'm not missing a lot of discussion in IRC. Um, Okay. Oh, the, 
snapshot is not guaranteed atomic. We when we do snapshot using database lab, yes, we right now it depends. We it's like we you can uh, do you can put a sync instance down and have no Postgres active at all, and PG data is definitely atomic. When like this is what we do right now, or you can use PG start backup stop backup uh, to, uh, to to do usual trick uh, to to make Postgres fix everything. It's we are discussing how to make snapshots with ZFS on this database lab machine. We are not using production for this, so we can put down this sync instance easily. Every uh, nobody is working with this this instance sync instance. So it's it's only purpose to fetch and replay walls. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it was a great pleasure to present you today. See you. Thank in, you very much, Nikolai. It was see, great. See you maybe in person uh, some 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 day and and maybe online. Thank you so much. Bye bye, Nikolai. Okay. Okay. If nothing else, Nikolai, I'll just end this meeting.